Imagine you wake up tomorrow, life was gone. LIBOR stands for the London Interbank Offer Rate and it's essentially the rate at which banks uh, believe they could borrow money in the interbank market for a certain period of time and for a, a particular uh, currency uh, on an unsecured basis. And those banks are called the panel banks, those are the submitting banks. Uh, they submit uh, the rates at which they think they could borrow and then those rates are averaged and that gives rise to uh, LIBOR. In fact, it's today 35 different uh, interest rates because it covers uh, five currencies, uh, US dollars and euro. Uh, being the most significant uh, uh, currencies um, and then it's across uh, seven tenors from one day to uh, one year. Today uh, about somewhere between 400 and 500 trillion uh, dollars of uh, financial contracts uh, are based on, on LIBOR. Well, I mean, LIBOR is being replaced primarily because it's become unreliable. I mean, first of all, obviously, it fell into some disrepute um, with all the scandals and so on as identified by the, uh, the Wheatley report in the UK. That was, what, 2012? The uh, so-called unsecured interbank market that was the basis for, for the submission of the LIBOR numbers uh, every day is uh, gradually going away. Uh, banks today, if they lend to each other, they tend to do it on a, on a secured basis. So, uh, so there's not a lot of real transactions to base it on and of course that opens the door or, or should I put it this way, it hasn't completely closed the door for judgment and, uh, um, and the kinds of judgment that uh, may not be entirely uh, uh, accurate. The inputs into those rates have been thin, so that the liquidity issues about the quotes and, in, and, and still today many of the quotes, for many of the right, even post-reform, are still um, synthetic quotes, they quote, they're quote, hypothetical quotes about what somebody would think they're going to be offered uh, to borrow money for a particular tenor. The importance of LIBOR is really that any sort of product that is finance related will make a relationship to uh, a reference to LIBOR. Uh, and that range uh, across all sorts of cash products and derivatives products, for instance, debt securities, loans, uh, bilateral loans, syndicated loans, mortgage loans, uh, exchange traded derivatives, uh, OTC derivatives. Uh, short-term financing instruments like uh, repo, so all those instruments make references to LIBOR and so the impact on a global basis is going to be huge. Well, eyeball replacement is still a work in progress. Um, for for, um, Euro for Sterling it seems to have settling around Sonia, there's the existing overnight interest rate unsecured. Um, that is a poll rate that's set uh, one day based on um, actual transactions the, the, the day before uh, between midnight and 6 p.m. Uh, and that's quoted in the morning of the following day. Um, for uh, in Japan, it settled around a similar rate, same with Switzerland. Um, in the US, of course, it's a secured rate so far. Um, again, aimed at getting to a as far as possible to a risk-free rate but uh, based around where the, where the volume is and what, what's, what's the most robust. Uh, and in for the Euro, currently have Eurobor, that, that again, that's still out there. There's no actual set uh, successor, but it looks like it'll be a, a rate called ESTA, which is the rate ECB published uh, rate. A large number of market participants will be impacted by the move to uh, the reference uh, rates. Um, most of them are either lenders or borrowers because in the finance industry that's where those rates are used. Um, so for borrowers obviously their loans might no longer be uh, referencing LIBOR, they might reference a, a new rate, there may be a migration from LIBOR to the new rate in their existing documents. Uh, likewise for banks, imagine all the desks at the banks that provide financing in various different forms. It could be securitized products, it could be loans, it could be leveraged loans, it could be debt securities. Most of those instruments uh, make references to LIBOR and uh, they will have to be migrated over to the, the, reference, um, the new reference rates. 
Likewise, investors and users of uh, derivatives products will be impacted. Uh, in the derivatives market, a number of funds, uh, naming pension funds, other investment funds like mutual funds or hedge funds make use of uh, interest rate derivatives as an investment tool and those uh, products will no longer be able to reference LIBOR, they will need to be migrated as well. So in that portion of the industry, uh, aside from borrowers and lenders, like investors will also be impacted. Um, in most markets, whether it's bonds, loans or, or derivatives, uh, the interbank market probably accounts for most of the activity and let's say that's 80-90%. That in itself is less problematic because it's between banks and so on and they are grown up, they're accounted for P&L on the transactions at the moment and to the extent there's a value shift from moving from a, a risk that embeds credit risk and it's, and it's got term, so liquidity uh, factors featuring in the pricing, if it moves to overnight rates or risk-free rates you know, they can just price that in and make an adjustment payment that will account for the value in the book. Uh, once you're in the end user community, things are slightly different because people have polarized positions uh, and they may be less inclined to agree to shift an economic to make a payment because they don't see the same value from their perspective. So a borrower might be less inclined to pay a higher spread to move on to a lower benchmark, for example. So in that area, to the extent that the banks and the, and the interbank market can't pass on the costs to those banks, they will themselves take some P&L impact. So the main risk uh, that's been identified by the industry in the whole process is basis risk. It's essentially the risk that certain cash products will fall back to a certain rate or a certain period of time, whereas the derivatives products or other related products will have a different fallback or the fallback will happen at a different point in time. So just take for an example a loan and an interest rate swap. If the loan fallbacks to a particular rate but the interest rate swap that's designed to hedge the interest rate risk on the loan fallbacks to a different rate, that's going to create a difference in the two rates that will be used for each of those two agreements and that creates basis risk. And the basis risk will have to be managed by both counterparties to the swap or to the loan product in that particular example. So what are some of the key implications uh, of having to transition away from, uh, from LIBOR? Well, first of all, I think you want to know all the contracts that are based on uh, on LIBOR, and it's just a matter of, not, not not just a matter of digging into uh, uh, the repository of uh, legal uh, contracts. Uh, you want to know what kind of exposures you uh, you uh, have uh, have on those, and also the fact is that you need to continue to operate on LIBOR till you know that next day is not there. Um, so you need to be close to a place where uh, operationally uh, IT you need to basically be able to push a button and you're ready to operate in that new world uh, tomorrow. Uh, think about all the things that you actually need to do to be able to do that. It's not a trivial matter. The regulators uh, at the moment are pushing firms to make sure they're planning, have a proper understanding of their book uh, and also have plans in place to manage down the risk between now and 2021 or whatever the transition dates are for the relevant underlying currency rates. Um, part of that means using, it, conceasing or reducing the amount of instruments today or in that intervening period that are based upon um, reference rates that people know will not succeed. They will not be good for the maturity, for maturity of the instrument. But nevertheless, everyone knows that even today there are quite a lot of instruments, in, depending in some markets, that are out there today that are currently going to extend beyond the transition date that will need fixing. And we're certainly positioning ourselves at the moment through our Condor uh, alternative legal solutions platform to do large scale potential repapering and document fixes in order to try to eliminate risk where there is no protocol, where there is no industry fix necessarily, and there has to be negotiated bilateral fixes to align as far as possible um, rates on old instruments between current rates that, are, that have replaced them. In most institutions, people are a little behind in terms of getting up to speed on the, those LIBOR migration issues. And so the leadership uh, item is essentially identify who's going to be in charge of that issue within the institution for that person or that group to reach out to the various 
business units within the institution and understand and make them aware of that issue and generate feedback from those desks in order to understand where the issues might lie.